You know, Gabriel Garcia Marquez used to say, well, first of all, Gabriel Garcia Marquez always defined himself as a journalist, not as a novelist. And he used to say that this is the most beautiful, the best profession in the world. And he was absolutely right. Not, not only the most beautiful, sometimes the most dangerous, and definitely in nowadays the most relevant. So my, my message today to you is very simple. There are no stupid questions. Uh, people with power, presidents, dictators, kings and queens, business leaders, celebrities, generals, judges, commanders, police officers, social media influencers, and all kinds of bullies, they would love to tell you and make you feel that your questions are irrelevant, unimportant, and frankly, stupid. Um, they would rather talk about something else than threaten the establishment and the way things are. But your job is precisely to make them feel uncomfortable and to explain to you and to your audience how come they got that power and what are they doing with that power. Some granted live in democracies and reach their privileged positions with votes, talent, and hard work. But others got their powers by force, by birth, by marriage, and by abusing the system. So regardless how they got to the top, your job as a journalist is to question their authority. If you don't want to get in trouble, I think you chose the wrong profession here. <laughs> um, real reporters, and by this I mean independent, nonpartisan reporters, are frequently making life difficult, now let me change that, are frequently making life impossible uh, to those who are above us. So no, the powerful, they're not gonna appreciate what you do, but it doesn't matter. If they are intelligent, they'll understand your role and they'll deal with it. And if they are not well, you'll, melt, you'll make them mad, sometimes really, really mad, and believe me, that is perfectly okay. Don't worry about that. <laughs> Journalism can change the world like no other activity. As the great war correspondent, Mary Coven used to say, the real difficulty is having enough faith in humanity to believe that enough people, be the government, military, or the man on the street, will care when your file reaches the printed pages, the website, or the TV screen. We do have that faith because we believe we do make a difference. And believe me, we do make a difference. This is the only profession that I know um, that will keep you young and rebel for the rest of your life. Once you leave this school, you will only have two things to do, just two. In this era of fake news and the explosion of social media, your first most important responsibility is to report reality as it is, not as you wish it would be. So be diligent, do your homework, check your facts, and then recheck them again. Two good reliable reporters from two different parts of the world can cover an airplane crash or a hurricane or even a terrorist attack in more or less the same way. So report what you see and give all points of view. But remember that in journalism, we don't get medals for credibility, nor there is a great system that takes points away if you don't report the truth. People in real life and the internet simply trust you or they don't. And once you lost them, it is very difficult to get them back. I, I've told this story in the past, but I think it's worth remembering. Um, I, I live in Miami, so for many years, we used to kill Fidel Castro many times a year. Uh, it was kind of a sport uh, in, in Miami, and we were always wrong. He was always alive, and he always came back to power. So, so once I was in a supermarket behind a Cuban couple, and then they were discussing again that Fidel Castro had died. He was perfectly alive. Anyway, th the fact is that she was telling him, um, you know, Fidel Castro died, and, and he told her, well, until Ramos says on TV that he's dead, I won't believe it. Um, well, eventually Fidel Castro actually died. Um, I have been called so many times to the newsroom to say, hey, Jorge, Jorge, come to the newsroom. Fidel is gone. He was never gone. Anyway, this time, this time he was gone. I, I was not the first one to report that he had died. But I was concerned about my credibility, especially with that, with that Cuban couple. So, uh, <laughs> so I, I reported about it. I was not the first one, but I got it right. And, and, and I think that, that was important. I, I know many good journalists who can do the reporting part with absolute respect, with concentration, with amazing detail. And it's really an art to describe to others what you see and hear. Some journalists are fantastic painters, and it's such a joy to read them 
and to listen to them. But you know something? That is not enough. To be a really great journalist, you have to report reality and you have to question and challenge those who are in power. That's the essence of what we do. No other group in society has that responsibility. That's what we do. Doctors save lives, politicians rule, architects and engineers build beautiful and useful structures, writers and actors and musicians create art, and we ask tough questions from people who don't want to answer those questions. That's what we do. Now, if I were to ask you what's the purpose of journalism in this planet, the answer should be very simple, to challenge the powerful. And how do you do that? By asking tough questions. There are no stupid questions. As a matter of fact, when you're doing an interview, you instinctively know which one is the most difficult questions that you have to ask. If your hands are sweating and your heart is racing, that's the question precisely that you have to ask. Your body is telling you that a confrontation is coming and you have a choice, fight or flee. And if you're a journalist, you have to fight. When Donald Trump recently told a reporter that she was asking stupid questions, I don't know if you saw that. Okay, well, he was actually wounded in protecting himself. White House correspondent Avi Philip had asked a question on the Ru Russia investigation that could eventually lead to the impeachment of the president. She was right on point, but instead of answering, Trump chose to insult the reporter. The same thing happened recently with CNN's Jim Acosta. He questioned the president at a press conference about a fake invasion of Central American refugees that was only in Trump's head. The president had sent more than 5,000 soldiers to the border while the caravan of immigrants was still hundreds of miles away. I, I just came back from the border, believe me, there's no invasion and there's no national emergency at the border. Nothing is happening right there. Um, but there are many lessons from this incident. But for me, the most important one is this. Don't give away the microphone. Hold the microphone. Keep the microphone close to your heart and with your, in your hands. Defend it. Your power, our power as journalists, depends on the simple fact that our voice needs to be heard. And if they take away the microphone, then we're silent and they win. The White House just implemented a new set of rules during press conferences. They don't want you to ask follow-up questions, but that's exactly the moment when you challenge power. So here's my recommendation. Don't follow that rule. The White House is not your boss and Donald Trump is not your boss. Remember that. If you wait for your turn, it is possible that you will never ask that question. Remember when he ejected me from that press conference? If I had raised my hand and wait for my turn, I would be holding my hand right now. <laughs> so, um, so wait for a pause, stand up, and throw your question. We didn't choose to be a journalist in order to be silent. And for that, sometimes you have to disobey. When somebody's abusing his power, disobey. When they order you to sit down and keep quiet, disobey. When someone is making a racist statement, disobey. Trump, as you know by now, um, he's not my friend. And, and I don't want him to be my friend. That's not our role. We have to be on the other side of power. Again, when he ejected me, ejected me from a press conference with a bodyguard in 2015 for asking a question, only two reporters supported me. Casey Horn from MSNBC and Tom Jamas from ABC News. They challenged Trump and they forced him to allow me back at the press conference. When Jim Avila conf was confronting Donald Trump at the White House press conference, only Peter Alexander from NBC News defended him publicly. So here's my request to you. Be kind and supportive to one another because one day you're gonna need to help somebody else and you're gonna need the support of all the people surrounding you. So let me just finish with this. Your generation is the first generation that knows much more than, than the previous one. The way you handle technology and your personal cell phone has given you an incredible advantage over us. Use it. Look at me. I am a dinosaur. <laughs> okay? What, what I'm asking from people to do every single day, to watch a newscast at 6.30, that's when you become extinct. I mean, if, if you're waiting for, if you are there one minute before or 31 minutes later, I am not there. That's the definition of being a dinosaur. But, but don't forget that in journalism, more important than platforms and apps and cell phones, 
It is about of telling truth to power. During my lifetime, sometimes the most important news in the world happened in faraway places, in Vietnam, in Afghanistan, in Iraq. But now you are lucky enough that the most important news is right here. It is about Donald Trump and how he's changing the most powerful country in the planet. So don't let him get away with it. Remember, there are no stupid questions. Congratulations.